<laughs> Welcome back to Rule of Thirds, an offshoot of our Screen Refresh podcast. Our goal every episode is to take a little break from watching and analyzing movies, dive headfirst into some nostalgia, or just get a little creative. So every month, we select a different topic and create a top three list that may or may not be near and dear to each of our hearts. Shoot us a message on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, at Screen Refresh, or send an email to screenrefresh at gmail.com and let us know what your top three are to suggest future topics. I'm your host, Tim, and I'm joined by my co-hosts, Dean and Nick. Get out of my podcast. <laughs> Hello there. <laughs> and in the spirit of Halloween today, we will be counting down our top Halloween episodes I know this kind of gets into weird territory of like Halloween specials or other things. Because I feel like during our childhoods, they had a lot of those like half hour or hour Halloween specials of certain things that weren't part of shows. They just kind of happened. Like Charlie Brown. Yeah, like it's the great pumpkin Charlie Brown or I know on. um... Wait, so we're not doing those? (laughs) I mean, if you had that in mind, then go for it. Oh, okay, because that's, yeah. <laughs> I was thinking specifically of the Halloween episodes of shows. Like Community's Halloween episode. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, uh... I, I, okay. Because if it was specifically just Halloween shows, then I would probably end up saying Witches Night Out, but I just talked about that on the other show. Oh, I don't know what that is. I don't either. I'll have to listen to your show. <laughs> it's, it's our Fall Fright Guide. <laughs> As of this recording, it releases tomorrow on our other show. So yeah, so as far as any of the the Halloween episodes or in Nick's case, Halloween specials, I know it's something that I don't know if it's still done nowadays. I feel like everybody does Halloween episodes of their shows, but I think the that mid-90s to early 2000s was really the, the bread and butter of a lot of the really fun ones. So I'm interested to see what the two of yours are. I mean, I think just the television landscape has changed. I don't have cable, so all I'm watching is serialized individual stories instead of, like, the NBC sitcom where they have, you know, a fall to spring 26-episode run where they have their Christmas episode and their fall episode. True. I just don't watch those things anymore, so it might seem like they're not doing it. Maybe they st- they still are. They're just not in our. If it's like these anymore. eight episodes HBO Max prestige series, it's not like they're going to waste <laughs> one being like and the Christmas episode. Yeah, the Chernobyl episode where they do the Halloween. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's the same episode, but they're all in costume. <laughs> <laughs> Hire us, HBO. Yeah. The claymation, the crown, Christmas special. <laughs> Um, <laughs> you joke, but I want all of these projects greenlit. <laughs> but yeah, so that's just, I wouldn't have considered that until you just said that. But yeah, I think that might be why. Which m- makes sense, because I feel like now uh, the whole process of developing shows has changed, that they have to start resorting to that mindset. And the only ones that kind of stay on networks for the most part are all of the the surefire bread and butter, like ABC sitcoms and NBC sitcoms and all of those things that, of course, they'll have like their Halloween episode. But I feel like it's not necessarily the the level of stuff that we got used to. So with that said, who would like to go first? Or would you like me to lead off this way I'm out of the show earliest based on our new rulings? You're hosting. You're last. I'll go first. <laughs> we, we just don't hear you the rest of the time. I, I just Dean watch. Wants- I know Dean wants to go last, but I'm going to steal his thunder. Oh, no, I don't want to go last. Oh, you don't want to go last? Do you want to go middle? Yeah, I'll go middle. I thought you just said you were going first. I am. Well, I'm, I'm giving you I like how we decide this like, when we do it live. Like, genuinely, it's like, <laughs> oh, it's like, oh, let's see. Peer behind the curtain. This is great entertainment of three guys deciding which order they go in <laughs> in real time. So I, I originally was going to go with the Scary Godmother Halloween Spooktacular. However, not realizing that this was meant for Halloween episodes specifically, I discovered one like 15 minutes before air because I really didn't even want to do the Scary Godmother one. But if we're going <laughs> to stick with episodes of actual television shows, I hope I'm not stealing anyone's single choice. But I'm going to pick The Haunting in Bob's Burgers. 
tomorrow is Halloween. We're trying to get into the holiday spirit. Boo! Yeah, we're even taking the kids to a haunted house this afternoon. Ugh, again with the haunted houses? I think I'll pass this year. What's the matter, Louise? You don't like being scared? Are you kidding? I would love to be scared. The problem is I see every scare coming a mile away. Don't you? <laughs> Why doesn't everyone... Ugh, haunted, uh, haunted houses are so dumb. Where Louise is the horror fanatic, basically, nothing scares her, so the family literally go out of their way oh. to lure her into a false sense of absolute dread and scare the ever-loving shit out of her. This was the episode that when I still lived in Connecticut and I was at my parents, like I, they walked in while I was just watching the show eating lunch one day and they don't watch Bob's Burgers, but they watched this episode beginning to end and liked it. <laughs> just thinking about it makes me laugh of them walking through this, like the haunted house and yep. they open the door and it's like, the porcelain doll with the two sticks in the eye sitting in the chair and, and Jean just goes that isn't a good use of that room <laughs> <laughs> the writing on Bob's Burgers is always so fantastic and this one in particular really stands out because when I'm trying to think back on like Halloween specials that I grew up with like none really stood out to me to the point where I wanted to talk about them and then this one literally hits me at the very last minute like this one was really good you're off the edge of your seat the whole time watching it only because like it's not scary but it's just Louise is such a popular character and she's grounded in this like nothing can scare me and the family is really doing everything they can to kind of lure her away from that sense of like you know we're trying to scare you and it's failing left and right and then things start to go really really bad like one terrible thing after another and then finally at the very end they get her to scream for her life and then she realizes that it was just a prank and the family was planning it the whole time and she tried to shake it off but she clearly is like yeah she loved the whole thing but she's still shaking hope you liked it liked it it was freaking incredible i'm still shaking <sighs> Just a prank, Han. I wanted to dislike Bob's Burgers when I first saw it. I think. Why? I don't know. I think maybe I saw one. I had the same feeling. I don't know about the show. I don't know. I saw it. I think I felt like it was trying too hard. Maybe it just wasn't a great episode. It just might have been like not the top shelf Bob's Burgers first episode I watched. But then Laura likes it, and she, my wife, she watched a couple episodes, and I was like, oh, this is actually very charming, and it is funny. And I almost had a sour start to it, but I'm glad I went and checked more of it out because it is funny. But I haven't seen this Halloween episode. Oh, yeah. It's definitely worth, like, I mean, all of it I think is on Hulu right now. So it's definitely worth taking a half hour and just watching it. A lot of their Halloween episodes are fun. The one where they go to, like, the, that other, like, the richer neighborhood and they're looking for the, the big <laughs> candy bars. and Yeah. Like, all of their holiday stuff is, every Thanksgiving episode is funny. Their Christmas ones are good. So I think Bob's Burgers is just a, a solid show overall. This is in season six, episode three. So it's not like you have to watch the other six seasons plus two episodes of to catch up to this point. You can just turn on that specific episode and watch it. And you're not missing anything because you pretty much you pick up on everything that you need as you're watching the thing. So it's really self-contained enough that it, it works. Yeah. And I think that's the the benefit of shows like that of you can just grab it at any point and it's not like you're always able to get viewers especially on a non-streaming scenario just because it's oh if somebody's watching i can sit down i can just watch bob's burgers i don't think there's any character arcs or anything like that that is so intense that it's oh i'm gonna miss out on stuff like there's yeah. callbacks and things that are fun like the when Louise has the fever and she ends up like seeing the Kujikopi that guides her through yeah. like that other thing. And it's like, oh, cool. Like the Kujikopi when he's trapped in the wall episode. So there's definitely fun callbacks, but it's not a requirement. So I, I agree. That's that's fun. Minor digression. Did you see the movie? No, not yet. It was pretty good. It, it's it's definitely like out. it's definitely like three episodes in one sitting, so to speak. So the quality is still there. It doesn't feel like I'm watching a movie. It just feels like this is a really long episode. So it was pretty well done. This is going to sound par for me, but I remember traveling for work and I landed. So I went to a theater to catch the first movie and they were playing Bob's Burgers and Crimes of the Future that were starting at the same time. 
and I was torn on which one to go to and I ended up doing Crimes of the Future. Mm. But I feel like that's a split demographic that somehow meets me both ways of like, do I watch the David Cronenberg surgeries, the new sex movie or Bob's Burgers? How was that? I should have went with Bob's Burgers. Oh, you didn't like? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Two out of five on Letterboxd. Still haven't seen that. I think you told me about that. We were writing in the car and I think you told me on how like one family decided like oh yeah. leave early <laughs> or something well, no the, so there was the one family sitting there and i thought it was like oh i don't think they know what they're getting into it's like oh they're and then these two people are having sex as they're also performing surgery on each other and then i see like the kids with like the mom get up and leave and i was like oh i guess that's what got them and then Like four minutes later, they walk back in with popcorn and sodas. And I'm like, no, it didn't drive them away. They just ran out of snacks. (laughs) So, wow. Refreshment. To be like nine years old and your parents bring you in and just like, here's David Cronenberg. It's not as, like, I was waiting for the child to get up and be like, it's not as good as his old stuff. (laughs) So, it's like watching a movie with the Adams family in real life. (laughs) It pales in comparison to Existence. (laughs) So, so that that was my crimes of the future experience. Um, So, Dean. So, me. I think you'll be shocked at this pick. But I'm going to have to go with The Simpsons, Treehouse of Horror. It's a frightening night of fun. Something scary happening. Three tales of terror served with a sight of Simpson. Your wife is quite a dish. Dang. It's a nightmare come true. <laughs> the Simpsons. All of them? Episode one. No. Out there. <laughs> the first one? I'd like to say, I want to say episode one. But, this is a cheat, take out the last story, which is the Edgar Allan Poe Raven story, and switch it with Treehouse of Horror 3, the Krusty the Clown Possessed Doll story. Um, <laughs> that's that's my augmented Treehouse of Horror. So the first Treehouse of Horror has, um, uh, oh, I forget the damn titles of it. Oh, uh, Bad Dream uh, House. Bad, bad Dream House. <laughs> Make the walls bleed again. Which... <laughs> That's funny. The blood usually gets off on the third floor. <laughs> <laughs> the Shining. Um, which is... I'm reading right from Wikipedia, but it sums it up so nicely. Poltergeist and Amityville Horror kind of spoof. They move into this house. It goes... They start to go... Everybody starts to go crazy and wants to kill each other. Lots of hijinks. But I think my favorite bit about it, beyond the jokes that I and Tim mentioned, is at the end... The house is sick of the family and just decides to destroy itself, <laughs> like on its own, just uh, just pieces out, kind of like at, at the end of Poltergeist, but it just <laughs> where the house was just so tired of them. Yeah, <laughs> just, just <laughs> I've had enough of you, Craig They're like, T. Nelson. Cause, yeah, because the the Simpsons are like, well, I guess we could treat them with respect, or it's over. But it's like, no, I'm not gonna live with these these people. The other story is. The second one in the in the first episode is Hungry and Are the Damned, which is features the aliens Kodos and Kang. They're the two aliens that appear like all the time. They're like just the show's aliens, constantly drooling. They take the sim- they <laughs> abduct the Simpsons. The first my first favorite joke is they're beaming them up to their ship and they get to Homer and like they, he he's too heavy. <laughs> Like, the ship is going to crash, and, like, a second beam comes down to help, like, bring him up to the ship. But they, like, they're treating them so nice, and Lisa discovers, they're, like, feeding them, and Lisa discovers a book called How to Cook Humans. Oh, I remember this one, yeah. yeah. That's, like, that's like the pinnacle joke in that. It's <laughs> <laughs> How to Cook Humans, and she confronts them and saying they're, they're, you know, they're trying to fatten her up, her and the family up to eat them, and then... Kang blows the dust off. It's like, no, how to cook four humans. humans. <laughs> and then she blows off more dust. It's like, how to cook 40 humans. Yeah, and then he's like, oh, but it appears there's more dust still. <laughs> <laughs> how to cook for 40 humans. That's the final title of the book. So it, it ends up being that they actually were just trying to be nice to them. Uh, but they dump them back on Earth after they've been um, uh, insulted. Which... 
I liked that. I mean, I like all of the stories. It was a show that like we didn't grow up watching Simpsons because my family thought it was like vile, which <laughs> compared to other stuff that was out that time. Um, no, but like they they didn't like <laughs> Simpsons. But then we would watch the Treehouse of Horrors and I'm like, the Treehouse of Horrors are so much worse in terms of like what I'm watching, like the mist that turns your body inside out and then they do like the <laughs> yeah. song and dance number at the end in just their muscle suits <laughs> like, <laughs> like that i can watch but I, I liked how they did all of these like it's funny in and of itself of the the hungry or the damned but then they do the the reference to twilight zone that it's stuff that you can laugh at but also you get the second joke of parroting twilight zone of like to serve a man uh, it's a cookbook yeah so like top-notch writers simpsons two, simpsons seasons like two and three to ten are like and not like they get much golden age that. yeah yeah monorail monorail <laughs> i'm sure every each of you have like a favorite treehouse segment my favorite treehouse is four the, uh overall yeah is that with the brains or the that cafeteria Oh no, that's uh, five. Um, that's five. Yeah, I think that's like Cafeteria of the Damned, um, the Shinnin. Yeah. Um, <laughs> boy's got the Shinnin. You want to get sued, boy? But um, <laughs> but four. <laughs> like this is this is the value of the Simpsons. The fact that like just thinking of these scenes, we can laugh at. But yeah, the the four is the one with. I think it was the devil in Homer where he ends up wanting that. Uh, he gets that donut and it's like, oh, like once you oh, he eat makes a all deal. that donut, your yeah. soul is damned to hell. <laughs> oh, and it's like Ned Flanders is yeah. the, Satan. Yeah. But the, the one I really loved is actually another Twilight Zone one. It's uh, was it Nightmare at Four and a Half Feet when there's the gremlin on oh, the side the of the bus. bus. Yeah. But then it That's ends with one. the Bart Simpson Dracula, which I think I've referenced this one multiple times of... Grandpa walks in and he's like, we have to kill the boy. How'd you know he's a vampire? He's a vampire? Ah! <laughs> <laughs> uh, on the, the Krusty the Clown, Possessed Krusty Doll episode uh, segment, my favorite bit out of that that I think of, I quote that, you know, once a week. <laughs> it's, I'll take this doll as like the doll carries a terrible curse that's bad <laughs> but you get a free frogurt that's good <laughs> frogurt is also cursed that's bad but you get to choose your own topping that's good <laughs> the topping has potassium pencil <laughs> that's bad <laughs> can i go now um <laughs> yeah that's why i had to like slide that in as a sub story but um, just just for that. Yeah, bit. they're all pre- they're all pretty good. Just for that bit. I mean, the whole the whole story is great, but that's one of my favorite Simpsons bits. Even that. That's another Twilight Zone one because that was the the talkie Tina yeah. with Telly Savalas. You're right. Wow, Treehouse of Horror was just home run after home run of movies and Twilight Zone episodes. I haven't seen that many, and I'm almost embarrassed to say so. I mean, that's I. It's like one of those things where, like, oh, I envy you because I think they're hilarious, and you could go back and like watch them now for the first time. I know, Nick. When we used to still live together, I went through a stint where I, for October, I was watching a different one every night. That's my idea. Feel like they still hold up because I still laugh at like all of those for the most part. Like, granted, as time goes on, they start kind of getting. I know there was. I think the last one I watched, like on air when it actually aired on tv was when they started getting like into the super political ones of there was like the voting machine that like was attacking homer or something like that because he was voting for the wrong person and that's when i kind of started trailing (laughs) off because it stopped being more about horror and started switching over to other (laughs) non-horror horror i don't know Less of a parody and just like... Yeah. Well, I think that's part of The Simpsons as a whole. It probably around the time when it was starting to slip in terms of quality. I'm I'm looking at the poster for Treehouse of Horror 33 that airs October 30th of this year. And the poster looks like they're doing a Babadook thing. They're doing a Death Note. 
and they're doing something else. Because this looks ridiculous if it's real, and I think I will definitely watch this. We should cover it. I'll do a mini 30-minute uh, special on, on that one of theirs. I'm on board. Oh, you mean 34? 33? XXXIII? That aired last year. So is it a rerun? We don't have a new one? 33 is going to be aired on October 30th, 2022. Oh, you're right. Why did they bring up 32? <laughs> Dean's like Dr. Manhattan oh. exists in all time. Oh, no. The first result was season 33, episode 3. That's why it came October up. October 2022. I'm enjoying Treehouse of Horror 33. <laughs> September 2022. <laughs> I'm recording a podcast talking to my friends. <laughs> what is that? Zombieland? Oh, that's probably the other one. That almost looks like Attack on Titan, but you're right. That's um, it's supposed to be Ryuk. If it's Death Note, Babadook. I don't know what the thing on the I left is. I will not is. know what it is. I'm, I won't understand. I'm just references. curious now what the like last year's was. It's interesting. Lisa has the makeup shotgun, which I'm pretty sure that's what that is, which is from an old, old episode. But yeah, I think all of these... I think the the short story Halloween ones, because I know regular show always did like, uh, was it Tales from the Park or whatever? I always like the little shorts because then you don't really need the 30 minute Halloween idea. It's just, here's like eight minutes of something that would just yeah. be a gag and then let's move on. It's just like, it's just like a joke a minute or not even a minute, a joke every line. Yeah. Some ideas just can't be stretched to 30 minute or, you know, right. 22 minute length. So let's just yeah. divvy it yes. up eight, three times. I'm in full support of just get in, get out when it's uh, the idea's over. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that's the Treehouse of Horror. So I had a lot of ones that I had in mind, but I eventually ended up on the October 20th, 1991. It was Airy Indiana's Halloween episode. America's Scariest Home Video. Back in Jersey, Halloween was my favorite holiday. When else can a non-adult wear a disguise and roam around after dark, forcing people to give you candy for no good reason and then trash their house if they don't? But here in Erie, things are different. There's no telling who or what you might bump into around these parts. Simon and I had to be prepared for anything. Do you guys remember Airy, Indiana with Omri Katz from Hocus Pocus? I, I don't know the words you're saying right now. I have not watched the show. <laughs> they're, they're actually your trigger words, Dean. November. <laughs> Citrus. I'm going to start <laughs> killing people next door. <laughs> I must kill the queen. <laughs> beep, 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 beep. This was recorded in September 29th, 2022. I was just going to say. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, shit. Dean exists in all time. <laughs> It's September. No, that's <laughs> it's so bad. This is co- content. <laughs> no, it isn't. No, it is not. Wait, I typed in Airy, Indiana, and I got Gary, Indiana Eerie. on Google. What? Eerie. And E R I E. Airy, Indiana was a terrific show for weird kids like me that was like horror adjacent. So every sat, I think it was like Saturday mornings, but it would be about um, Omri Katz playing uh, Marshall Teller and his friend Simon. And it would just be them after he moved into town, exploring all the oddities and weirdness of their like small town of, oh, yeah, it's like Elvis lives in town and he mows his yard and there's Sasquatch that walks around and there's werewolves that attack and all of these other various things. And I know like Toby Maguire was in the episode as like a old timey 1920s ghost who was like stuck somewhere or something like that. But in this one in particular, it's Halloween night. So they are looking to get ready to go out and they end up getting stuck at uh, Simon's house because Simon ends up having to babysit like his younger brother or whatever the case is. And after the parents are gone, they end up getting stuck on this whole like the car breaks down and then they get like egged and all of these things. But meanwhile, the little brother is watching the mummy on TV and he ends up biting the remote that causes him to switch places with the mummy. So now they're trying to fend off the mummy in the real world while the little brother is terrorizing everybody inside the movie. 
And then they find out that it's not actually the mummy. It's actually the actor who plays the mummy. And he realizes that he came out of a TV. So now they're trying to get him back in. And he says he's been trapped in the mummy for like ages. So now they have to try to help him get back into the movie before the little brother destroys it. And so he can go back to doing what he wants to do. And I loved that that show. This is like a ring ring that you can escape. Yeah. I guess not that the victims went into the video, but shit, Eerie Indiana. It sounds familiar now that you say it, but I don't think I watched any of these. I remember seeing the trailer, like not trailers, but like commercials for the show. But I don't remember what channel it was on, but it wasn't any channel that I usually watched. So I think it's that's the only reason for it. Was it Disney? Uh, it was listed as NBC, but I couldn't remember if. Okay, so it was originally on NBC and then it was syndicated on Disney. Yeah. Growing up, Disney was a luxury, so it wasn't uh, one that I often had. And NBC, I don't know when they would have played that. It was a single camera, too. Which, now this makes sense on why I liked it as a kid and why it it felt fun. Yeah, it feels like a movie. Well, Joe Dante was a creative consultant on it. Okay. So it was like a very Joe Dante kids show. Do you think it punched above its weight as far as like... Was it meant to be was it meant to be like family slash kid or was it just like a show and if kids watch it, whatever? I mean, I think it was there was nothing I guess because kids are the stars. But. Yeah, it was like there was nothing in it that was overly like kids couldn't watch it, but it was more on the not the scary side, but it was on the weirder, creepier side of things. I feel yeah, I mean the lighting I feel like it's yeah. an evolution of Are You Afraid of the Dark? Yeah, except maybe taking a step back back from are you afraid of the dark yeah well, it's almost like this would did are you afraid of the dark be come after this or at the same time i think it might have been at the this same is 91. time 91 yeah because this was 91 yeah. to 92 i think are you afraid of the dark came either at the tail just end of starting this maybe or, yeah which there's still episodes of are you afraid of the dark like the the one with the pool or like all of those that i think would creep kids out now whereas this i think they would get a kick out of and enjoy because it's like horror light it's like, oh, we're dealing with a ghost. We're dealing with werewolves. But it's not anything that's scary. It's just like, yeah, these are all Halloween-y things in this. But it's not a horror show. Oh, yeah, Are You Afraid of the Dark started in 1990. So it came just before. But I guess just the lighting in it is very cinematic. It's very contrasty, dark. It's not bright. So it just like seems, I think it makes it feel more adult than maybe a, a kid's show. It looks cool. I wouldn't yeah, call I it like I missed show. out I think on it's not like, the show out. I would think it's like a like a teen kind of thing. Yeah, probably like, like a teen. like eleven to fourteen kind of deal, or yeah. like eleven to fifteen. Like I don't think kids that were driving back in nineteen ninety one were headed home to watch Airy Indiana. <laughs> I mean, I would be, but it's not a Y seven. It's like a TV four or like TV fourteen. Probably still got a Y seven though. Some guidance suggested. Lots of canted angles, wide angles. This was maybe that's just this episode. I'm skimming the scariest home video episode. But. Oh yeah, specifically because it was the Halloween episode. It was a lot of that. Like there are brighter episodes in the show, and a lot of them take place in daytime. Gotcha. Um, but yeah, this was also the the first thing that I saw Jason Marsden in, who we talked about also in Hocus Pocus. He played Dash X, the like weird loner kid who just floats in and out of episodes and. Sometimes helps them, sometimes is against them, but... (laughs) It's like the spike of the show. (laughs) I mean, pretty much, yeah. So So this this whole thing was just an audition tape for Omri Katz to get Hocus Pocus. I mean, probably? (laughs) I mean, I'm not not to take away from the show, just like... I'm sure his being on the show was like, yeah, why don't we just get Omri Katz, that kid from the television show? He's the perfect... It would make sense because he was in Matinee, which was a Joe Dante movie. Joe Dante was a consultant on this. And I know that Joe Dante, like, probably is friends with Mick Garris, seeing as it's all the same circles. So that probably was like, cool, here's Hocus Pocus. (laughs) So that's it. And that's the last thing you ever do. I mean, there was a bunch of other stuff, too. I know, like, we didn't talk about, like, Candy Bar Creep Show from Rugrats or like any of that, but we could always bring that up on later Halloween I don't episodes. remember that by name, but I think I remember most of Rugrats just by seeing and 
yeah a couple seconds like oh that's this episode. that's yeah. the introduction of the uh reptar bar yep turns your tongue green oh mm-hmm. uh, those looked so delicious to me for some reason as a kid i remember the year nick I made wanted them. a reptar bar it was a disaster nick, but it worked can i put an order in for this year you may so do you guys have any final thoughts on Halloween episodes? I don't want to get into all of like the the honorable mentions that I had only because I know we'll probably bring talk about these again. I didn't even think Halloween. of it. I was just like, oh, I know what I'm doing. And that's oh, it was it was, <laughs> was tough to decide. It. I actually had a different one up until like just before this show, because then I remembered Area Indiana. I actually struggled with this one. I there really wasn't that many that came to mind. Yeah, like I've seen a few, but most were in my childhood, and either they weren't explicitly Halloween or just like I really just didn't want to talk about it. Yeah. Also, some of them are like lost to time in my brain. Like I remember yeah. there was a Halloween, like the TGI Friday nights or whatever they were. They had an episode of Boy Meets World where there was like a slasher going through their school and killing all of them. I think I remember, I remember like somebody got like a pencil in the air and all of this other stuff. I just remember it being fun because it was edgy for a Friday night kid show. But a lot of good stuff. You guys remember two guys, a girl in a pizza place? No, I never watched that. They had the one. That's the best thing Ryan Reynolds has done. With the, the evil Ryan Reynolds, the evil Berg that's running around killing everybody. I might not have never watched an episode of that show. Yeah. It's the, it's the one worth watching. I haven't seen. A lot, like I haven't seen the rest of the show since I don't know years ago, but that's the one that always springs to mind. <gasps> Berg, you scared me half to death. Well, let me finish the other half. And so, the 90s laugh track there. <laughs> 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 so, that was like crusty. <laughs> so, as far as Halloween episodes go, I think we'll definitely come back at some point and talk more Halloween um, after all of the Halloween stuff that gets released overall between hocus pocus that you've already listened to at this point and the fall fright guide and all of these other various things so any final thoughts Let's, before we re- we're gonna live stream the we're gonna live commentary the simpsons episode you wanna you want we'll do 20 minutes afterwards talking about it let's do it you can do the watch part is it on disney plus or hulu i mean it's it i guess if we to watch it live, about to be on cable. If we want to make it a live thing, all right. I guess we could watch it after the fact too. But the whole event part of it would be like watch it live and immediately. So like a dead it. stream. We'll do it live. What's a dead stream? We do. We don't do it live. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think we'd better if we just threw commentary at, at it or something. It's like watch it with us. Three, two, one, and then we can even include them in our real ritualistic syncing process. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone around the world, clap on three. <laughs> we can't. <laughs> we can't start the episode unless you clap. Just everybody at the same time around the world claps, and it just like takes down a satellite, kicks us out of orbit, <laughs> crash into the sun, <laughs> it moves us off our axis just enough that then we all burn up in the sun. <laughs> The tides shift. <laughs> so, yes. That works. Just throwing that out there. I'm on board. Okay, gang, that wraps up another episode of Rule of Thirds, and we'd like to thank you for coming along for the ride and discussing our favorite Halloween episodes. As always, you can reach us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, at Screen Refresh, or shoot an email to ScreenRefresh at gmail.com. Let us know what your top three would be, or if you have any topics you want to hear us discuss. That's it from us. So for Nick and Dean, this is Tim. Have a great week and catch us next on Screen Refresh, the first Monday of the month. We are calling out to you. Tell us you're safe. Tell us where you are. Can you hear us? Answer us. Get out of my podcast. Happy Halloween.